Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. We're very excited and proud to have James Davenport joining us this morning from our SCPGA uh, Foundation and PGA HOPE uh, coordinator. He's been with us for six weeks. Uh, James is a 26-year uh, a veteran in the Navy and uh, retired in 2021, fell in love with the game of golf, has a wonderful story about how he came to learn uh, about uh, PGA Hope and what started his journey uh, with our section. Good morning, James. Thanks for joining us here on the Catalyst webinar series. Good morning, John. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I am well. I am well. So uh, I've got your slide deck loaded up. Uh, yes, sir. Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to the section and tell us a little bit about uh, your background and and uh, and how it's been going these last six or seven weeks with the section. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, James Danport, as John said, uh, I was a I was in the Navy for 26 years. Um, I saw the PGA Hope program. I was an avid golfer already, um, weekend hacker with all my buddies in the military, uh, and with my wife every Sunday. Um, and my wife and I were watching the program and saw on CBS that uh, PGA Hope uh, was was a program that uh, was highly televised and spoken of. And I just saw it and I knew that that's what I wanted to do when I retired. Um, and then going to Temecula, going to golf school, learning understanding the industry and kind of figuring it all out from there. So James, up until that point through your 26 years in the military, were you playing golf? Were you a golfer at all? Yes, I was. Um, in about 2000, I moved to Hawaii, got stationed out there and, and basically helped with fundraising. And on Fridays, you could put on a golf tournament and be part of that, or you could be at work um, and not supporting the command and the fundraising. So, kind of guy that I am. I love supporting things and fundraising and golf. So that's how I got started. And literally on the second hole of uh, playing golf, I made a birdie and I said, I can absolutely do this. You birdied, so, wait a minute, you, hold on a second. You birdied the second hole you've ever played? Yes, sir. The funny part to that is it was a par three. I hit a driver, it was 150 yards and I hit it to three feet and made my putt. Easy game. Easy game. It's, Easy game. I, I hit a little bit less than a driver nowadays. <laughs> but that's how I got started was, you know, supporting military fundraising um, and just finding the love of the game and being with my buddies. You know, I've brought my clubs on almost every deployment I've ever been in, um, including Iraq. I brought a putter. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a, a fun journey. Uh, but after the 26 years, I wanted to find something that I, I could feel good about doing. Um, and it was teaching golf. And it all started with uh, PJ Hope and Chris Nowak and that CBS special that I saw. So, uh, Next slide. yep. All right. So obviously, uh, PJ Hope is the flagship military program under the PGA reach and falls under the foundation. Uh, it's completely free to all uh, veterans, uh, military, reservists, retirees, anyone who's ever served honorably. And as, as I stated before, um, that MOU was created by Chris Nowak and the secretary of the VA that allows us to refer uh, veterans to hope as a form of therapy for physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being. MOU? Yes, sir. Um, MOU is a um, memorandum of understanding, basically an agreement between two parties. Right. Um, just saying that, yes, we can do this. Yes, it falls under that, and we'll, we will support it. And the VA has done more than support it. So, um, and then only uh, PGA members, associates and LPGA members are, uh, can instruct PGA Hope. 
and have to be certified uh, to do so with a five to one instructor to veteran ratio. Uh, next slide, please. And then here's kind of the, the heat map. Uh, it's basically broken down by uh, counties and it kind of shows how many veterans are located in this area uh, split up by county. And as you can see with the um, symbols of golfers, those are where the programs are uh, currently with more to follow. But as you can see, we have one of the largest uh, concentrations of military in the U.S. All right, next slide, please. And then where we where we were, where we're going, and what we've been doing in two years, we went from seventy nine veterans served at four facilities. And last year, um, we got almost 500 at 20 different facilities. And this year, we're expecting to do right around 900 to 1,000, hopefully. We've had a lot of weather this year, so a lot of uh, sessions have been postponed, and then some had been lost. But um, I know some facilities are doing what they can to pick up the lost sessions, um, specifically. So Yes. James, what do you attribute such a exponential growth in participation, both from PGA members and facilities over the last three years? I mean, there's been a tremendous amount of national marketing behind it, but it can't just reduce that. What do you attribute that to? I would say for Southern California, um, it all starts with the with the section um, and with Amber Lynn, my predecessor, um, and what they've been doing with the PGA professionals that are here in Southern California. Um, we've gone to different section meetings, trainings, uh, summer meetings, annual meetings. And I've literally gone on stage with Amber Lynn and told my story and try to motivate uh, PGA professionals to want to host this at their facilities, want to get certified and have veterans come in and help with the waiting list. Um, because we were over a thousand last year, and currently I think we're hovering right around 634 on a waiting list. That's 634 students just waiting for instructors, um, and just waiting to benefit from this program. So th that's kind of what I attribute it to um, the amount of conversations we've had at different section meetings, chapter meetings. Um, and the trainings and just going to facilities and asking them whether they'd be interested um, in doing something. And, and maybe it's not hosting it at their facility. Maybe they, they can just do a range day or, you know, provide us some tea times at a, at a discounted rate. These are all things that uh, facilities have been willing to do um, that's generated this kind of attention. And I expect that we're going to be well into a thousand next year, um, especially with what national is projecting. Next slide. All right. And then just talking about the program in itself. Uh, typically, it's six weeks here uh, for about two hours. Like I said, uh, different programs are do doing different things. I have programs that are doing six sessions an hour a week. Uh, with a graduation at the end. Um, and every one of these programs have a defined graduation day, as you can see. Um, and that's just basically taking the, the veterans out on course, playing nine holes with them, uh, giving them, you know, providing lunch, you know, or whatever uh, you end up doing. And then we give uh, graduation gifts like PJ Hope hats, shirts, logos, towels, so on and so forth. But as I said, uh, we have 634 uh, veterans waiting on the, that list and not enough instructors to handle them. Um, so just as a, a tidbit or a carrot, um, instructors receive uh, an hour, uh, $100 an hour for two hours. Obviously it's gonna be two, $200 and then increments of 15 minutes um, for 
you know, if they were to do an hour and a half, they would get paid $150. And then elite pros get a stipend uh, weekdays. It's $500 and on weekends, it's a thousand. And that's just to help do the admin stuff, the programming stuff, uh, reaching out to the students, coordinating and such for graduations. And then obviously it's- So James, so James yes. it's $100 per hour for the instructors. Uh, 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 and there's a ratio of five students or less. Does the amount change? as you if there's only three or two or four no it doesn't but uh one of the things we want is uh, the only thing that we ask of the veterans is that they show up there's no cost to them but their attendance is kind of the thing that drives the amount of money that we spend um obviously it's all through fundraising and donations but the more students we have to instructor the more we're getting juice out of the squeeze, basically. Um, so it does not change how much they get paid. Um, if one person shows up, they're still going to get paid for the hours that they work there. So if it's a, if you're a PGA professional and you're the lead, you get $500 for the class for doing that. And if you're the only instructor, you get the $100 per hour for the length of the six week class. Yes, sir. That's how it works. And that's the lead pro stipend uh, that I'm talking about, the 500 uh, Monday through Friday and 1,000 on the weekends. Next slide. Yes, sir. And then the, uh, the expenses and the re reimbursable uh, items that you can get, obviously course fees, some golf courses, tend to waive this stuff to help with programming fees because it is um, all through donations. So the less that we spend, the more juice we get out of the squeeze. But um, we absolutely want to provide some type of water, Gatorade, especially during the summer. Uh, I, it'll all be reimbursed as long as it's you know reasonable. Um, and then same with the, uh, the lunch. You know, we don't want to have like a thousand dollars for a lunch for, you know, 10, 10 students. So just try to keep it as reasonable as possible. And then uh, at the graduation, I'll come and drop off some uh, graduation cards, um, the hats, the shirts and so forth. Next slide. And then post-graduate uh, life. So um, one of the things I didn't talk about uh, with the titles is I'm the Southern California PGA Hope Ambassador. Uh, and I was nominated and selected last year, went to Congressional and got training. And there's a lot that we do with the PGA Hope program, but after they're done with their sessions, they're completely done. They don't go through this program again. Uh, but what we've created was a community and a bit, uh, the ability for them to carry on their golf journey, whether it's through play days, uh, different things. And as you can see, uh, these are the guys that are in the Inland Empire area. And one of the guys on the right-hand side with the Hope hat, uh, that's Will Palacios. He's the Inland Empire captain, and he takes care of the veterans uh, in this chapter. And basically, they have standing tee times, um, abilities to do different things. Uh, but he, he works with the golf course, Steve Saunders, and has a great relationship in doing postgraduate stuff. Uh, and that's kind of what we're trying to do all throughout Southern California is not just getting them into the program, but giving them something to do uh, post program. Next slide, please. So James, real quick for you personally, over the last six weeks of this new position, how's it been? What have been some of the, 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 uh, the biggest takeaways, the biggest eye openers, what are you enjoying the most about it? What are the biggest challenges? You know, one of the biggest challenges is I spent 26 years in the Navy and I'm used to certain things being a certain way. Um, and I'm learning a lot of new things and a lot of new programs. 
and it's a, it's a lot to take on, but everyone's been so amazing from the section, just the PGA professionals that knew me as an ambassador that, you know, I, I trained with at Koto de Casa when we were there for hope certification training, just an unbelievable amount of support that I've gotten from PGA professionals all throughout Southern California. The people that saw me when I was standing on stage, you know, basically asking for help to, to get this program, uh, to what it is and what it's going to be. And it's been, uh, it's been an amazing time. It's, uh, it's definitely difficult and there's a lot going on. Um, but it's nice that I have the support that I have. And that's probably one of the, the best things is when people see me, they're just happy to, you just see a smile on their face and they just know like we're in a good place. Um, so I'm going to do everything I can to keep everyone smiling at me <laughs> and run this program the way that it, you know, Amber Lynn had it and take it to new heights. So, well, yeah, I was just going to, just going to, uh, uh, agree with you there. Concur. Uh, Amber Lynn, you have a wonderful predecessor who's paved a wonderful road for you. So, uh, the track is there and you're going to do a great job. We know it. Next slide here. Thank you, John. Yep. Oh, I went too far. There you go. All right. And then how can I help? Some of the things that we were talking about was hosting a play day. If a, if one of my captains or myself, uh, you know, contacts the golf course, or if you're interested in hosting a play day and giving uh, some tea times in the afternoon on a Monday or Tuesday, doesn't matter. Whatever you're willing to do to give these uh, postgraduates something to be able to do, whether it's a range day, um, whether it's a, a play day where they have yeah, two hey, or three James, can you, can you explain how the play days work? Um, so, so play days are, are nothing but like set aside tea times, um, at TCI, I, I think they have, uh, 12, 12, 10, 12, 20 and 12, 30 every Monday or Tuesday, uh, for this month. So like this Monday, um, at 12 o'clock, we have standing tea times, uh, for 16 to 20 players, um, depending on how big the list gets. So do right. they sign up through the VA or through uh, Temecula Creek or through us? So they sign up through our captain. So Will Palacios, the guy that I was just talking about, they'll he'll put out an email or put it on our Facebook group page and say, hey, he's these are the standing tea times I have. And then he'll send it out to my graduate list for the Inland Empire. So these are postgraduates. These are veterans that have gone through the program and love golf now want to continue playing um and tci has standing tea times that they allow us uh at a discounted rate so they pay i think it's uh forty dollars to to go play on a monday afternoon with the cart and that's what we're trying to do at different facilities um native oaks does the same thing so um i think Theirs is on Tuesdays down in Valley Center. But it's just basically standing tea times that allows uh, our captains to fill them with graduates, not veterans that haven't been through the program, but postgraduate stuff. Fantastic. And then um, some of the other things that we're looking for is just more PGA professionals, associates, um, just getting hope certified and i i plan on having another uh certification um probably at the end of october after i get back from uh dc i'm going back over there for some more training and i think that's pretty much it for that excellent well, there's James's uh, contact information on the screen. We're going to send a copy of the presentation out uh, along with the YouTube recording of this morning's Catalyst. Uh, James, you know, welcome to the section. We're glad you're with us. Thank uh, you, sir. You know, I can't think of a better uh, successor for Amberlynn than, than yourself. And, you know, if uh, 
we're all we're all in this together if uh, we could be of service to you in any way reach out to us for all the uh participants on this morning's catalyst any show of hands any questions out there before we wrap it up nikki you have anything for james i just want to make one comment james thank you for today i know these things aren't easy for you but you did wonderful <laughs> and uh we're so thank glad you. that you're part of our team uh there's nobody better to oversee this program and, and take it to new heights um, you know, I know it's uh, greatly impacted you in your life um, and your wife, and uh, I know you're passionate about um, passing that along. So thanks for all that you've done. Um, for those that are thinking about becoming certified as a HOPE instructor, don't think twice about it. As James mentioned, we're trying to schedule one more training session before the end of the year, and then we'll have others next year. But you do have to be certified in order to participate in the program. Um, highly, highly recommend it. This is one of those programs that is probably one of the best things that the PJ of America has done. Uh, we truly, truly get to impact lives uh, through this great game. So highly recommend it. James, thank you. Thank you to everyone who uh, currently is a PJ Hope instructor. We have some great success stories out there. Um, so if you want to talk to someone that has run a program, if you're thinking about it, uh, please reach out to, to James or our team and we can put you in touch with someone. I did want to point out in the chat, I just posted a link. So recently, a couple of weeks ago, uh, CBS did one of their, you know, wonderful uh, specials that they do on the PGA as they do a couple of times throughout the year. Um, and it was all on PGA Reach, so which is the foundation of the PGA. So they focused on Junior League and uh, PGA Works and, and of course, PGA Hope. So James was the feature on that. Um, so I would highly recommend that you take a look at it um, it will kind of, uh, it shows his journey, uh, shows what he's done. Um, they did have to edit it at the end because uh, when they were filming, he was still at Native Oaks and then we swooped him away from Native Oaks, but they they did put a nice message there that, uh, that he is now working for the section, which was a goal of his and overseeing our program. So pretty cool stuff. I'll give you a second to copy that link. Um, highly, highly recommend that you Take a look at it. John, thank you for allowing us to have the platform to talk about PJ Hope. It's probably one of the most important things that we do uh, here in the section. So thank you both. Indeed. Thank you, James. For all the PGA members on this morning's Catalyst, you will receive one PDR for joining us today. Thanks for supporting the Catalyst. And James, take care. Thank you, Nikki. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.